There's so much to pick up on. Uh, I don't know where to start. OK, you, you, you mentioned Holding and, and Gabriel, but um, really, are they an Adams stroke Keown bold? Because you need that if you're playing a back four. And, and has his reason uh, that he's been playing a three is because, OK, David Luiz, wonderful on the ball, but would, would you play him in a back four? Uh, mm. I don't know. You're the expert. You tell me. No, no, not for me. And, and I'm going to reiterate, you know, I think they can be a, a Bolden, Keown and Bolden, you know, and Adams. And, uh, you know, they, there is a good partnership, but we defended as a unit, Rob, and we needed the fullbacks. And, and Hector Bellerin and every fullback that's come to the club in the five, last five, maybe more years, has never been taught how to play fullback. They've become kind of wingers. They they. Bomb on, so, so, and it leaves the central defenders isolated. And I don't care how good you are, if you're left 1v1, holding's left 1v1, you know, at some point that forward's going to get the better of you, you know, over the course of the game. So, you know, Hector for me needs support, he needs to be worked with. I've not seen a fullback improve. When they join Arsenal at the start, you know, in, within three, five years, they always get, you know, we've got Gal Clichy, we've got Kieran Gibbs, you know, I can give you endless. And Lee Dixon, you see, my old great mate, my old colleague, you know, he reminds me so much of Bellerin when he came to the club. You know, he used to bomb on, he was fantastic, got him from Stoke, you know, bombed down that right side all day long. And, but we need to teach him the defending. And at the end of his career, Dico, I think he turned into one of the best right backs in the, in, in the world, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm giving him a big G here. But, you know, he was fantastic at defending. And that's because he was part of the unit. You know, he knew everything that the central defender was doing. You know, it's a partnership across the back four. So to answer your question, they can be. But he needs to work the fullback. I think Teeny has got it all, to be honest with you. He's got a fantastic attitude. And he's someone that you can really work with Rob but to keep on playing him left side centre half and then sometimes playing him left back and you know, the kid's going to get confused you've got to put him in that left back and work with it you know and I think he can be a real talent you know he bumps on down that left was it was it not at Arsenal where, where that, that that reference to the piece of string the piece of rope that if 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 one fullback goes forward, the other one shuffle across. That was that was coined uh, at Arsenal. And is that what you'd like to see? Then it was interesting to see uh, Liverpool. Absolutely. We looked at it on the football show yesterday. Even they now uh, at the weekend were, were using that technique uh, rather than both fullbacks bombing forward. So is that is that what what I'm hearing from you there? I've been saying it for a long time, Rob. You know, when your right back goes, your left back comes in. You know, I think the modern game, you know, the four across the back needs five at times. And we used to use, back in the day, we used to use Patrick or Gilberto to slot in. So the fullback could push in. But if you don't pull your fullback in, then you've got to get another player. That's a little bit technical. I wish I had the, the tic tac ball. But, uh, um, you know, you need that, like you said, the rope. To pull the full back in, but if the, the left back's on the, on the other side of the world, you know, on the other flank, then you might need the central central midfield player to actually pop back in. So, you, you, all I'm saying is, defenders more than offensive, defensive in, rather than offensive, you have to have consistency and familiarity. You have to keep playing with the same personnel. You have to keep playing in the same system. And from going to system to system, in my experience doesn't work. It doesn't work. Your familiarity with the goalkeeper, with your midfield players, you know, those kind of relationships, partnerships that we're talking about now. If you're threading people out and pulling the next person in, you know, there's no consistency, you know, and defensive... Uh, stability, and I see it in Arsenal, not alone here. I see it in the whole country. They, they pull teams out here and push it. You know, it's the only area of the park for me that you have to leave alone. You know, you have to build relationships. Do you also have to have an Adams esque leader back there to make sure that they're doing what is needed to be done? And football teams lack those nowadays, don't they? I think across that spine, I think you're right in, in you know, the national team as well, England team. And, and you notice with the Liverpool, you know, won the league last year, you know, best goalkeeper, best central defender, you know, Henderson in midfield. You know, they had a, the spine of the team were all phenomenal leaders. And uh, I always said, if Arsenal ever want to win the league again, they've got to get the best goalkeeper. And for me, Lino's maybe not the best goalkeeper. You know, I've, I've come into question with their, you know, Martinez being, being let go. You know, I think that was a mistake. 
mistake for me. You know, I think he's he's come of age, the goalkeeper Martinez, and he was he performed excellently last season. Why would you? You know, a club that's wanting to win the league for me, because I think Arsenal's the best team in the world and we want to win the league, you know, you know, and you build a team to win the league. Why would you let go one of the best goalkeepers in the country? You know, I don't see that as yeah. a as a good decision, Rob. No, and, and it was obvious which one was smiling the more on Sunday night, uh, wasn't it? Um, there, 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 was a, there was another thing you dropped in there. You just slipped it in. Uh, with, without maybe people noticing. And that was, you were saying, what you said was the, the arrival of Thomas Partey now, you think that that could well allow the team to play Mesut Ozil. Now, uh, Arsenal fans' ears would have pricked up uh, that one. OK, explain that one more. Well, I just got you. You've got a fantastic screen there now, you know. And uh, creativity is not maybe party's game, but what you have got, you've got. I think you've got a presence. You've got a leader. You know, you've got someone that. You know, I thought his performance against Man United was phenomenal. He was the, the for me the best. Excuse me, best player on the pitch, and uh, he got around the pitch. He covered. He doubled up on the defending. He kept the lines very narrow. All the defending principles of a holding midfield player were were, were excellently done by this guy. I, I was really excited. I, I you know, I, I, I was watching that game. I felt for the first time in a long time. I went, wow, hallelujah. The same that I, I felt about Gabriel as well, and, and, and holding partnership. I think it could. It's got potential to be one of the best partnerships in the league. You know. You you know, Rob, he's had problems with injury and stuff, but I think they've got the athleticism, they've got the strength, they've got the uh, you know, the, the commitment. I just think they... I'm going to go back to the same point, but I'll move on to what you're talking about. <laughs> but I think they just need to be worked with on a regular basis. But Ozil, for me, is one of the best creative players in the world. And what he, what he struggles with at times is his defensive side of the game. And, you know, to win the league, mate, we need great players. You know, the Dennis Bergkamps. We asked, and asked, I asked Dennis now and again to actually get back in and make us get behind, back behind the ball and just do a little bit for us, you know. Do a little bit, get back behind the ball and make it a little bit difficult for him. You know, that's all he Ozil needs to do. But when, when you're putting him on the sides of stuff and you're asking him to go with, with runners and fullbacks, He's not got that. But what he has got, if he played in this team now, is someone like Partey that you go, there you go, here he comes, you know, cover that one. You know, when, at the time Stennis let people go and Patrick just slid over or Manu Petit, these people that were unrecognising, great, great leaders, great team players, you know, Manu Petit, we don't even speak about him now. You know, full length for the pitch in 98 to win the World Cup for France, you know. These are the players, mm. that's the people, that's the stature, and parties like that. So when you've got players in your team like that, I always said uh, Ozil's the cherry on the cake without the cake. You know, we didn't have a cake for so many years. But now we, we, we're getting some players in the team and there's some stability there. He needs to work on a back four, he needs to work at these full backs, you need to get Hector, Hector more defensively uh, inclined, work with him. And then there's, there's signs where you could get the, the, the cherry on and, uh, and let him pull the strings for, for a bang yang down the middle. Because I, I don't think that, that the other guys are working at the moment. Uh, and I think he could feed, like Dennis fed, fed Thierry on Reed. I think there's a loads of similarities there. And I, if I was a coach, I'd love to see that whether you're playing in Europa League or something to, to practice it. But I, I would love to see Ozil in behind feeding a bang yang all day long. Yeah. I, I hear your um, excitement. And, and yeah, yeah I, just, I was just thinking what a year 98 was for Emmanuel Petit, that's for sure. Um, that goal in, in the Stade de France cap in the double as well, wasn't it? Um, OK, I hear your excitement. Um, Arteta... Uh, and Arsenal at this moment, how far are they away from fulfilling Tony Adams' dreams of being uh, the best team in the planet? OK, how far away are they from winning a title at the moment? Uh, uh, they're off the mark at the moment, Rob, we've got to be honest. But it's very rare, you know, the class of 83, when we cut, I had six internationals in my youth team and Man United took over when the class of 92. It's, it's very rare that, you know, you... you you get players two ways. You actually develop them through the academy or you um, 
or you go and buy them. And I think the recruitment has been really poor. And they're, at Arsenal at the moment, they've, they've got rid of some of the best scouts in the world, you know, Franny and, and uh, Stevie Morrow and these kind of... There's a real shift. So we're going to have to wait for that to see that. There is conflict sometimes. Willan's come into the team, has got the same agent as the sports director. I think that's sometimes, uh, you know, there's a conflict there. They wouldn't say that. Well, I've worked in Spain and, and, and Portugal, and they they kind of kind of used to that. But I think us English kind of think that's a bit strange for me. And the players that you know, because Joe Willock, for instance, we don't want to block up. I think my point is we don't want to block up the hole when we've got good kids coming through, Zaka. And so you, when you're doing recruitment, you try and fill the holes that are struggling. And look at uh, um, Villa. Villa's a great example. The right back, Matty Cash, the other night. Wow, Slough boy, Dagnum and Redbridge, gone to Nottingham Forest. What a player, 23. You know, he, Bang Yang was in his pocket, athletic, strong. It, what, a, what a great play, you know. I thought that was a fantastic right back performance and I loved him in an Arsenal shirt. You know, he, yeah. So, um, there are lots of things there, Rob. 